Intentional Sin, a daily devotional from Pastor Joseph Prasanna Kumar. Greetings to you in the mighty and gracious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today, we will meditate on the consequences of intentional sin. Many times we mistake intentional sin to be a sin committed deliberately or by desire of a person. While that is true, in today's meditation we will also examine the other chances of a person to commit intentional sin. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 26 reads as follows. For if we go on sinning willfully after receiving the knowledge of truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. When a person accepts Jesus as his or her personal savior, this means that they have realized the truth that they have sinned and that they need the saving grace of Jesus Christ and that Jesus alone can save them by appropriating the sacrifice on the cross. This is the truth that the writer is referring to in this letter to the Hebrew church. Not only that, The consequences of continuing in sin after knowing the truth is also what the writer brings out very strongly in this verse. That is, there no longer remains a sacrifice for the sins. One of God's servants in the Americas said as follows, There was a point in time when people used to hear the message from God and used to turn to God in repentance. Now, with prosperity and materialistic gospel that is going around, instead of repenting, people respond by saying that they accept. What are they accepting? They are accepting the materialistic and proper prosperity-filled teachings, which also compromise or downplay the nature of sin. Some even go to the extent of saying that God is the one who created us, so does he not know under what circumstances we have sinned? Therefore, God will forgive us and will continue to bless us. This is a marked change from the teaching of sin, repentance and being forgiven, which is the message of the cross. As we go back to the verse for today, we notice the word, if sinning willfully, that is, if we go on sinning willfully. Notice the word, if, a conditional clause. The writer of this letter to the Hebrews is giving a conditional clause and warning on the consequences of willful sin. Let us look at another example from the Bible recorded in 2 Samuel chapter 11 verses 14 and 15. So in the morning, David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. He had written in the letter the following, Station Uriah on the front line of the fiercest battle and pull back from him so that he may be struck and killed. Most of us are familiar with the story of David and Bathsheba. After committing adultery with Bathsheba, David asks for Uriah, her husband, to be put in the place where the battle is is at its fiercest, so that Uriah might be struck down and killed. 2 Samuel chapter 12 verses 9 and 10 Why have you despised the word of the Lord by doing evil in his sight? You have struck and killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword. You have taken his wife as your wife, and you have slaughtered him with the sword of the sons of Ammon. Now then, the sword shall never leave your house, because you have despised me, and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. What was the intentional sin committed by David? During springtime, when all kings go out to war, David was in his palace. His eyes fell on Bathsheba, and the lust of the flesh overtook his desire, and he committed adultery. This is where Nathan the prophet comes to David, bringing in the strong word of warning to David. In this verse, we will note that, number one, there was the lust of the flesh. Number two, David wanted to make the wife of another person as his own, and to that extent he devised and calculated and schemed the death of Uriah. What was the consequence? The same sword through which David got Uriah killed will never leave his house. Secondly, the sin of adultery that David committed in secret will be committed in public by his own flesh and blood. That is his son Absalom. Dear beloved, let us take this time to examine ourselves today. Even though David was a man after God's own heart, he committed willful sin. 
one thing led to another and he ended up breaking almost all the 10 commandments given by God. Today, let us approach the throne of grace for help. Help to recognize areas where we are falling into sin intentionally. Let us seek God's help to repent and forsake the sin. May God grant you his grace and bless you with the peace of his forgiveness. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful message this morning. We thank you, Lord, for speaking to us through the life of David and also through the warning in the letter to the Hebrews. Father, we pray that you will keep us from committing intentional sin. Enable us to remember that whenever we sin knowingly and if we continue to keep on sinning, there will no, there will no longer remain a sacrifice for our sins. By the power of the Holy Spirit, convict us of our sins. Convict each and every brother and sister listening to this message right now of their sins. And Lord, by the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ our Savior, wash us and make us whole. Make us whole that we will be holy and acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.